there is a ton of stuff built in, even just in the quick starts before you get into the programming. Check this out. Hey friends, so the folks over at Electfreaks sent me this XGO Lite robot dog. This is powered by a Raspberry Pi compute module, which is squarely in the area of my area of my interest. I am huge into Raspberry Pis, as you all know. I've got a half dozen Raspberry Pis on my desk. I love this kind of stuff. I also love working with the Make Code team and the block-based programming when I teach at schools. So this is kind of well in my area of uh, of interest. Uh, they have not paid me for this video, but they did send me this uh, this robot to review uh, in the interest of full disclosure. So this is pretty cool. Let's check it out. I'm going to cut this video together the best I can. But remember, I'm not a professional YouTube uh, reviewer. Uh, I'm just a super fan of uh, cool Boston Dynamics-like robots like this one from Elect Freaks, which uh, includes a bunch of features that I'm pretty excited to check out. First thing I notice when it comes out of the uh, packaging is how nicely this package is. It came in a cardboard box, of course, shipped, but look at this. And inside, it is very nicely packed, and immediately you know that uh, someone put some thought into this, and I appreciated that. Really well, well built, well packed. It has a default kind of mode. You can see right here, it is basically crouched in a, in a default off state so that it can be put into this box. And this is kind of your calibrated state as well. On the front, we've got our screen. That'll be the face of it. And uh, I've left all the screen protectors on. You can see that I've got the camera protector on as well. Here's the little front camera, so it can see your face and do on-device um, on recognition. You've got buttons on the left and the right, and then of course you've got your SD card right there to, uh, to load things onto it. This is all metal. It's very cold to the touch. Uh, this is not made of plastic, which is, uh, which is nice. Um, it is very, uh, very cold and has a very substantial feel. You can hear and feel the servo motors there. There's a lot of motors, a lot of freedom in the way that it can, can run. It comes by default with a bunch of things preloaded. But the whole point of this and why I was interested is that because it is a Raspberry Pi uh, for a compute module, I can program it in Python or whatever. Push this button to turn it on. Now it's going to boot up and it stands up like this. So now it, it stood up from the prone position, and now the face is gonna turn on, and that's when you know it's actually booted. But you can see that it already got up. It's got a very kind of Boston Dynamics feel already. So, yeah, I actually, it's recognizing my hands, including the hand I'm using to hold the, the phone. Look at that. Now this is again all done on, on the device. They've got an ARM Cortex at 1.5 gigahertz in the front part here. And then they've got enough RAM and enough processing power to do all of this kind of work. It's like having a Boston Dynamics robot, <laughs> except it's in your own house. That's, that is, ah, that's pretty cool is surprisingly well machined for a robot of this price point. This is actually a grabber. This grabber can open and close and the arm can articulate. So this guy can not just walk around like a lot of educational robots, but I actually pick stuff up. So now I'm remote controlling the robot. Have it pick up the red ball. Okay, now it's picked it up. Let's turn around. And let's walk over here. You can have it walk, or it can trot.
Now there's a couple of ways to get the dog on the network. You can generate a QR code in their app and have the dog scan the QR code and then it'll jump on your network. And I recommend using a 2.4 gigahertz IoT network for compatibility. Or even easier, you set the hotspot on your mobile phone to an SSID that it can recognize and then it will jump on. So I'm using an iPhone and now my iPhone and the dog are on the same network at the same time. So now I'll go and say back to the uh, SSID here and I can confirm that the dog is on the network and then I can try to remote control the dog. Moving over to my PC, let's take a look at how we can program the robot using their tools. Now this is a little goofy. You know, I don't fault them, but it is, uh, they're learning. This is uh, the IP address that you hit in order to load their Blockly tool. That's over there. Uh, I think that should have a nice URL or you should be able to run that locally. So it turns out that the XGO Blockly, which is right here that they're running to control the robot, is a fork of the Google Blockly tool. Uh, this is an Apache license, so it's not GPL. They're not obligated to return that code. Would be nice to see it though. So that XGO Blockly then communicates to the robot over your local your local network. That network, in, in my case, being the Hanselman IoT network that I went and I added the robot to, and my computer is now running on. So I should be able to connect to the dog and upload code or run the code directly from the local Blockly running on my machine. I did end up switching to Firefox for the purposes of using Blockly because they are doing cross-domain work over WebSockets. So this IP address, which is a live public website, then bounces over to the robot directly, and that needs uh, some cross-domain security that apparently Chrome and Edge don't have. Firefox is apparently more lax. So that got, that got me past my initial issue with um, trying to run my blocks directly from here. Oh, it's moving around. <laughs> and it looks like I'm running out of power. It may, they make the recommendation that you don't let the power get below 20%, uh, which makes sense. So that is pretty cool. All in all, very, uh, very impressed. I will say it does, it does lack a little bit of software polish, uh, but the hardware on this is really, really well, uh, well put together. Um, improvements that I would make would be uh, make it a little bit clearer, a little bit easier on how to get onto the network, make this XGO Blockly not run on a random IP address. Ideally, I'd like to run it myself, uh, maybe clone it from GitHub, run it on my local machine, run it in a container. It should have a domain name and it should have an SSL certificate. It is extremely hardware-wise well put together. Certainly within the limitations of my ability in Python, there's some library things I need to learn about there, but I don't think I'm gonna have any trouble uh, getting this guy running around and doing all kinds of stuff. Remote control was really easy. Programming it was really easy. It is really limited only by your ability to program it. All in all, I would say eight out of 10, very impressive robot from Elect Freaks. This is the XGO Lite, specifically the CM4, it's 599. That's an investment indeed, um, but one could also say it's two Xboxes. So it depends on what you're really going to invest in. I want to thank the folks at Elect Freak for sharing that with me. This CM4 XGO robot kit powered by the Raspberry Pi compute module. I am going to end up sending this to the local high school robotics team and see what they can make with it. See you again later.